Welcome to VNN from our news headquarters in the nation's capital. Today, worldwide global CEO Barton Ramsey resigned after a series of cyber attacks on his company. Tonight, a special report. It was nearly nine weeks ago that we first heard of the hacktivist network The Voids planned to engage in what they called extreme action against U.S. interests in the form of a cyber attack. Five weeks later, we learned that the target of the attacks was worldwide global. Over several days, relentless attacks by the void resulted in financial system breaches, extortion attempts, internal communications breaches, false invoicing, an inundation of the company's server that disabled its website, and more. And it took the combined efforts of worldwide global law enforcement and two cybersecurity specialty companies to stop them. Tonight, we'll be discussing the fallout from these prolonged and devastating attacks with the founder of the Cyber Protection Initiative, Dr. Susan Lee Hamilton. First, Dr. Lee Hamilton, can you summarize the impact that this has had on Worldwide Global? Well, in addition to the loss of the CEO today, there's been a huge investor sell-off and devaluation of their stocks. This is really sad because they were such an up-and-coming company. They went from being a small business to IPO status quickly, and it seems that they didn't implement security advances to match their growing revenue streams. Naturally, their sales are down this quarter by 15 percent, when they were originally projected to grow about 4 percent. Layoffs have occurred as a result of all this financial stress and, of course, as of today, major leadership changes. It just goes to show whether you have one employee or 3,000, the stakes are the same in the end. If you ignore this, you risk losing something important, be it money or clients or employees. But this risk and these sorts of costs aren't limited to this one company, are they? No, not at all. In fact, recent studies by the Ponmon Institute, a research group that specializes in internet security, show that the median cost of cyber crimes for a company per year rose to 5.9 million in 2011, up from 3.8 million in 2010. So let's backtrack from here and talk about the causes. Why did this happen? Based on my understanding, there were several events that led to the void being able to infiltrate. First, there were some insider issues with a former employee who still had network access. He was discovered through a security audit, but by then it may have been too late. Also, I've seen reports about a void-created piece of hardware that was given to an unsuspecting employee. Once he or she installed it via their USB port, the damage was done. And just before the attacks, I've also read reports about massive lags in network speed and network performance issues in several offices. Things that indicate something's wrong. So a lot of that sounds like human error and not some science fiction or rocket science explanation. Exactly right. And that's why trainings and policies for employees are such an important part of a cybersecurity program. Also, ensuring operating systems and security software up to date is critical, as well as having what is called a defense in depth strategy. It's important to integrate all this into a plan and keep evolving and adapting the plan over time as your business grows. Well, given the statistics you laid out earlier, I understand why that approach is so important. Dr. Lee Hamilton, thanks so much for joining us this evening. You're most welcome, Jean. And when we return, we'll be discussing law enforcement's role with an agent involved in the ongoing investigation into this and other crimes from The Void.